God. 
Today we have Pastor Kenton Perry, who will be officiating for us. We will ask anyone who is coming up to speak or to do a tribute to adjust the microphone to your height so that those that are watching online can hear clearly. Again, we thank you all for coming out to show your love and support. And if there's anything you need from us, Grace Final Chapels, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you.
yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You will sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. But we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath. We are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength 80 yet their span is but a toil and trouble they are soon gone and we fly away who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us yes establish the work of our hands good afternoon everyone my name is Kenton Perrin and I will be officiating in this service, the celebration as we celebrate the life of Sister June Lee Lawrence. It's not easy when we come to a moment like this because as human beings, God created us to live and not die. But I pray God that as we go through this service today, I pray that you'll be comforted I pray that God will give you the peace that you need as you deal with the loss of Sister Lawrence. With that said, I'd like to leave one more piece of information with you before we continue with the program. Please, for those who are participating, take note of where you are in the program. As much as possible, um, I would like for the program to just flow. If I need to say something, just to remind you of where you are in the program, I will do that. That is fine. So please just take note of where you are in the program, and we will continue the service uninterrupted. At this time, we will now have our opening prayer from Colette Lawrence. Good afternoon and my condolences to family, friends, and community. Lord, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your everlasting mercies. Thank you that you are God all by yourself. Lord, we welcome you into this atmosphere, Lord Jesus. We are, Lord God, we are celebrating, Lord Jesus, not the death, but the life, oh Lord God, of Sister Lawrence, Lord, as she is absent from the body. 
and present with you. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will superintend this evening's, this afternoon's, Lord, funeral service. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you, in your Holy Spirit, in your will, in your divine plans, the Lord God, everything that is said in this atmosphere will glorify you, will bring, Lord God, a sense of peace, Lord God, a sense that you are here, Lord God, you've not left the family alone. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you will gather us together this evening like a flock, Lord Jesus, under your staff, Lord Jesus, and let, Lord God, the words of our hearts, the meditation of our hearts this morning, may it be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you are about to do, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that nothing absolutely nothing that happens happens by accident we glorify you father in Jesus' name amen please remain standing we are going to have now our opening hymn amazing grace if you have a, a program with you it is in the program
you may be seated. Good afternoon, I will be reading John's 14, one to three. It says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Good afternoon, everyone. My condolences to the family. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful Good night. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, second scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to, 50 to 58. And I'll be reading from the NLT version. What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Or mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die. This scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin in its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing that you do for the Lord is ever useless. This is the word of the Lord. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine when my eyes would see when your face is before me. I can only imagine yeah. Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes. And I find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you I can only imagine Will I dance 
for you, Jesus, or you will all of you be still. Will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. for being here today. Uh, my cousin was supposed to do the, this part, but unfortunately they are stuck in traffic. Um, she had something written, um, and this was the part of the remembrance. Um, my mom always tell me when I was a little bit that I cried too much. I should always stop crying because all I do is cry, cry, cry. You should save all your tears for when the day that I die. And people wonder why I've never showed emotions. But this is a difficult time. And my mom was very funny. She has a sense of humor. But one thing I know she loves in this whole entire world is her four girls. And it's so sad today. My mom could have never gotten all of us in one room together. But today, the day that we're putting her down, we're all here. And it may be sad, but I know she's, she's dancing because we're all here for her. She loves her fruits. And we were able to give her three beautiful grandkids. And my mom loved life. She loved life. And she lived through each and all of us. And today,
my mom every time will say something and she always confuse us. She will say Roxanne. Then she say, oh, I meant to say Aisha. Then she meant to say Kanika. And, oh, Janelle. Like she's talking to me, but she's telling me that I am Kanika, or Aisha is Janelle, or she's like, you know what I mean, you know? She fights so hard, but it's gonna be hard for us to accept this. It's a big loss to us, <laughs> and I'm struggling with it, but I think she's, in each and every one of us. And I'm so grateful she was able to meet Tamara, Kai, and most of all, Izzy. And she loved Offer Tree. Boy, she loved Offer Tree. She worried about Offer Tree so much. All she wanted to do was go Offer Tree and our fruit stem. You know, when people come and buy Katzi, let me get a banana. They'll rip it from the, the beginning, and she was like, from the middle, and she'd be like, no, that's not the right way, and she have a sour face. But it was just a sweet sour face. She never really mean anything by it. That was her gangster way of putting it to put up her guard, you know? She wasn't, she's a fighter. She wasn't able to do much things that she wanted to do. And I think through us, we have to carry on and keep her every day to remember her in us. And we are her legacy. And we may be miles away, but love and God will see us through this. And she got us. You know, I should be coming up here to do the tribute. But God made me the firstborn for a reason. And I have to honor my mom the best way how I know. I don't know if I'm doing it the right way. But I'm trying. And I got to dress her for the last time. I wanted help, but I was so nervous because she always said, Roxanne, Mona, whatever she called me, you know, just whatever you pick out for me, I'll be okay. And for this time, it was so difficult, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And she'll be greatly missed. She we never know stuff until it's at our door and how to deal with it and how to handle it because we think we have tomorrow we have the next day but really and truly we don't and this taught me to live for the second the moment and I'll try my best to do the right thing and I was questioning in myself, why do good things happen to bad people? My mom did try to do the right thing. We all. Sorry. If you could just grab your programs. <clears throat> oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world.
Praise the Lord. Greetings to the, first the family, the well-wishers, friends. June Lee Lawrence was born on August 19 in the year 1961. She was born to the late Lily and Anderson on Maxfield Avenue in Kingston on the beautiful island of Jamaica. She attended school in the same area, included the Norman Manley High School. She then later relocated to the Portmore area. Katty, as she was affectionately called, was a successful entrepreneur as she was well known. June Lee Lawrence Catty gave birth to four lovely daughters, namely Ramona, Kanika, Aisha, and Janelle. She loved her daughters and adored them. They are mourning her loss. She was also privileged to have the blessings of three wonderful grandchildren, namely Tamara, Kai, and Izzy. June Lee Lawrence was loving. She was kind, caring, and straightforward. And not to exclude, she was very thirsty. She was loved by so many. June became ill earlier this year in Jamaica and re relocate here in Florida for medical treatment. She spent a while in the hospital and was discharged home under the care of hospice. On October 22nd, 2022, she succumbed to her illness at home here in Florida with a nurse and her daughter Janelle at her bedside. She left to mourn her loss, one sister, Anne Marie Logan, who resides in Jamaica, her four daughters, Ramona, Aisha, Jan and Janelle, who resides here in the US, and Kanika, who resides in Jamaica. Three grandchildren, Tamara, Kai and Izzy. She left to mourn her loss nieces, nephews, and a host of family and friends. She will be sadly missed. May her soul rest in peace. Good afternoon and my condolences once again to the family, on behalf of my family and myself, and on behalf of the two churches that I serve, the Lighthouse SDA Church and the First Ephesus SDA Church right here in Florida. I'd like to take the time to share some words of comfort with the family. Um, you know, whenever, whenever we come to a moment like this or a situation like this, what happens is that, you know, the emotions take us over and we think different things and we feel different ways, right? And, uh, you know, sometimes we look to some words from a great philosopher or some great writer or some great leader to comfort us, but in my experience, I have learned that the best place that you can find comfort is in the Word of God. And so that's what I am going to share with you today. And I really do hope that you will experience the comfort that you're looking for. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we have come to this moment in time and 
Sister Lawrence's family needs you. And unless you speak through me, they will not experience the comfort from above that they need. So touch me now, Lord, and allow me to say the things that come directly from above. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. I want to share some words of comfort with you from the first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, the great apostle, the great preacher, the great teacher, the great theologian, he was the one that penned this letter. It's the first of two, first Thessalonians and second Thessalonians. Uh, just a brief information here, backdrop, the, the people of God were facing some serious problems at that time. One, they were facing persecution. Two, there were some internal struggles that they were dealing with. And three, they were dealing with issues around death, issues around death. And so in uh, chapter four of First Thessalonians, Paul took the time to share with them some words to inform them and to help them to understand how to relate to death. And by extension, by the power of the Holy Spirit, these words were inspired and it is to encourage us today. As we think about the words that I'm going to share with you from the Bible, I want to also let you know to the family, to well-wishers, friends, um, that I am speaking to the living and not the dead. Amen. Sister Lawrence cannot hear me, but you can. So the words that I'm sharing with you, family, today is for you to contemplate and to think about it well as you relate to God as you live in this life. In, in, in chapter 4 of First Thessalonians, and I have um, I've itemized them so that you can follow a little bit bet better. The first point I'd like to share with you is that you must live to please God. You must live to please God. Let me share what the Bible says here. Paul says in verse 1 of chapter 4 in Thessalonians, Finally, then, brothers, and I'm reading from the ESV version. If you have it, you can just go ahead and look at it. Finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus Christ that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and please God just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. So Paul is here letting the believers know, before I, I, I get to the verses of emphasis here, he wants them to know that the most important thing for them, or the imp an important thing for them, is to have a relationship with God. They must live for God. He says here, walk in, in this particular version, but if you look at the original version, the word that is used means that your life, the way that you live your life, must be pleasing to God. Not your boss, not your family member, not a benefactor that you may have in this life. No, the person that you must seek to please is God. And you can appreciate Paul saying something like this because if, if, if we agree with the word of God, God is the one that created us. And all the good things that we have in life, God is the one that gave them to us. The Bible says that he is the giver of good gifts. No matter who gives you things, no matter how, how wonderful um, um, people have been to you, God is better than them all the time. He's the one that sustains your life. You may go through problems, you may go through trials, you may go through sicknesses. You may experience the loss of a loved one, but the Bible lets us know, and Paul is letting us know here, and, and he's letting the church at that time know that they must walk to please God, live to please God, 
each and every single day of your life. Many times we put our trust in things. We put our trust in, in, in money or in our bank account or the fact that we have a nice job or we live in a nice house. We're able, we have a good education, but those things don't matter when it comes to God and eternal things. Paul says you must live to please God. People may not be happy with that, but that's okay. God is all that matters. The second thing I'd like to share with you, in addition to the, uh, um, to, to, to the fact that you must live to please God, family, live to please God, God, having a relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing in this life. The other thing is this, Paul says, and I'll share my point first, live to love others. Live to love others. He says in uh, chapter 4, 9 through 10, this is what the Bible says here. Now concerning brotherly, and I'll interject this, and sisterly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. And let me share verse 10. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, do this more and more. So if you notice in the very first verse that I read, Paul says you must live to please God. Do it more and more. And now he says you must make sure that you love each other. Do it more and more. I know sometimes, you know, in human relationships, things can go awry. You know, things are said, things are done, and we may rub each other the wrong way. I have two siblings, and sometimes they say things, and they do things to rub me the wrong way, especially being the older of the siblings, right? And, 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 but I must still find a way to be able to communicate with them and talk with them. You know, our parents, they're getting older now, and so I have to have regular conversations with them while they're in Canada, and I'm here in the United States. I have to put things in order. They want to hear my advice, and I hear from them, right? This is all about love, loving each other, being concerned about each other, talking to each other, right? Um, praying for each other, uplifting each other, and especially in a moment like this, we need each other, especially as family. Sure, you can get support from those who are outside of the family unit. You can get um, encouragement and a little text here and there. But when it comes to blood, there is something a little bit different. There is a little bit more closeness there. We may have thicker than water. Yes, we may have our trials. We may have our struggles. We may have our problems. But Paul says, Paul says, and he's talking about church now, and he's suggesting that they should live um, um, not as strangers, but as brother and sisters, right? But within our own family unit, Paul is saying here, we must learn to love each other. And the only way, right, and, and I'm building all these things that, uh, on, on the first point that I made, and as a matter of fact, everything that I say uh, will hang on that first point. You cannot love your brother or your sister unless you love God. And you cannot love your brother and sister and say you hate God. The two are working together. Remember, I'm talking to the living. I'm not talking to the dead. Sister Lawrence cannot hear me, but you can. So make sure that your relationship with God is good. It's in the right place. And secondly, you are not going anywhere uh, in terms of what God has promised if you say you love him but you hate me. That is not biblical. Are we together? So Paul is saying here, if you love God, you must love your fellow man. If you love your fellow man, that means you love God, right? There is a, there's a symbiotic relationship here. You cannot separate the two. 
The third thing, the third thing, and it hangs on the first point once again. We must live to please God, live to love others, right? And do it more and more. Paul says here, rather, the, the, the third point that I'd like to share with you is that death is inevitable. Let me say that again, right? I know it is not easy, it is not comfortable, but if there is one thing that we are guaranteed in this life is death. Once again, no matter how successful we are, no matter how rich we are, no matter what our political affiliation is or who we know in this life, right? You're gonna die. You might be handsome, but you're gonna die. You might be pretty, but you are going to die. That is what the Bible says. I'm not just making that up. As a matter of fact, when I was walking in here and I shared with you, I shared with you um, Psalm, Psalm 90, uh, the Bible says here, the Bible says here, and it's very blunt, you return man to dust. God created us from the dirt and to the dirt we are going to go. And that is why, that is why we shouldn't have this, this, this great feeling about ourselves that we are more than God has created or that we are more than God. We are mortal. That's what the Bible is saying here. You're not promised tomorrow. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we are like the wind. We're like a flower that fades. Right? We are nothing. No matter how important we think we are, we in, 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 in the scope of, of uh, mortality, uh, when we consider ourselves against an eternal God, God says we're dust and we are going to return to dust. And guess what? Because you know that you're going to return to dust, you must live to love God. Amen. And because you know that you're going to return to dust, death is inevitable. Guess what? You must love each other. As a matter of, let me, let, let me share what Paul says here in verse, in verse number 13. In verse number 13, I got so excited, I forgot to share this with you. The Bible says here, in, in, in connecting this point, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as, as others do who have no hope. Uh, another theological point here in terms of understanding death. Paul says here, and the Bible says it, that death is like a sleep. So Sister Lawrence is sleeping. She is resting in the grave. She's resting in the grave. God has decided what he will do, what reward she will get. But like I said, it is for you who are living. You have no control over her life. God does. But while you are living, you have decisions to make right now because death is certain. The Bible says in Psalm, going back to Psalm 90 once again, we're given 70 years on this earth. And by reason of strength, by God's mercy, he gives us 80 years. That's what the Bible says, right? So if you have gone to that level at 70 and you're still here, you're living on borrowed time. You're living on mercy, right? That's what the Bible says. That's what God is merciful to us once we reach this point in our life. But he's just letting us know that he's willing to extend grace and mercy to us. Death is inevitable. And the reason why we have death in this world is because Satan brought sin and sin brought death. And so because we are sinful creatures, we will die. Even me, as a, as a preacher, as a pastor, I have to live with that consciousness each and every single day. Have a wife, have a daughter, but guess what? Something may happen. God may see it fit to lay me to rest. And so I have to make sure that I live to please God. So that when I see him once again, he will give me my just reward. The, 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 the other thing, I just alluded to it. Death is inevitable, but sin is the cause. Sin is the cause. Jeez, the Bible says here in verse number 14 of chapter 4 um, in 1 Thessalonians, for since we believe that Jesus Christ died 
and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. You know, one of the reasons why I'm able to preach uh, confidently in the word of God is because I know that Jesus Christ died and in dying, he died for our sins. All have sinned, the Bible says, and come short of the glory of God. We're dust, right? In the sight of God, we are nothing, but he extends our gra his grace and mercies towards us. So Jesus Christ died because we are sinful. That's how death came into this world. Death came into this world because of sin. And Adam and Eve, our four parents, sinned, and so they passed on death in uh, 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 through their generation and so we die now but I'm so glad that Paul also lets us know that yes sin is the cause yes death is inevitable yet yeah, but guess what Jesus is the cure Jesus is the cure why am I once again it hangs on the first part Right? Where I said we must live to please God. In other words, we must, we must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Verse number 16, Paul says this, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Jesus Christ is coming back again. Hear me now. Hear me now, family. Hear me now, friends. Jesus Christ is coming back again to put an end to sin and death. So if we want to see Jesus Christ face to face, we must make sure that the life that we are living now is in alignment with God's will. He's coming back again. He's coming back in glory. He's coming back in power. He's coming back with the archangels, the Bible says, with the trumpet of God and those who died believing in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that they will come out of their grave. So the body that you have, you will not have that body. You will have an immortal body. You will have a, you, 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 we will, won't be short anymore. We will have a different height. We will be able to see properly. We will have 100% of our brain's capacity. Whatever the ailments are, whatever the problems are that we are facing in this sinful world right now, the Bible says that when Jesus Christ comes, he will put an end to all of it. That is why, family, that is why it is important for us to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. That's what the Bible says, right? He's coming back again. And New Jerusalem, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, will descend from out of heaven. God will come to take us to his glorious um, home, to, to the glorious home he has been preparing for us. Read, to, read, read um, in uh, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house, the Bible says. In my father's house, God has a big house, are many mansions. So all the things that we crave here in this life, they are temporary. But the things that God is preparing for us are eternal. So that is why you should put less emphasis on the things here in this life and more emphasis on the life to come, which is the one that we will spend with Jesus Christ. Then we which are alive, then we which are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be, hear me now, we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, the Bible says, therefore, encourage one another, encourage one another with these words. I'd like to leave something else with you. 
The Bible says here in Revelation chapter 1, chapter 21, it says here, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. In other words, there is no more separation. Death will not separate us anymore. Diseases and sicknesses will not separate us anymore. Distances will not separate us anymore. And I saw the new, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice from, from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will, catch this now, family, catch this now, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death, and death, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be any more mourning, nor crying, nor pain. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. Also, he said, write down, write this down, for these words are true and trustworthy. So family, I, I, I just wanted you to know that everything is going to be okay. You're going to cry. You're going to be sad. We're celebrating the life of your mom, Sister Lawrence. You have experiences. You have memories that you're going to go through time and time again. And that's okay. As humans, we go through these things. But you have a God that is there to comfort you. You have a God that is there to make you happy, to give you the peace that you need. And if you want to experience something like this outside of this world, you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot escape it. In a moment like this, it's very sobering. We will think about death and we'll think about our own uh, mortality and we'll think about the loss and, and the separation that we're experiencing. And then life goes on and we sometimes forget. We'll remember the loss of the person, but then we don't think about our own soul salvation anymore. And Jesus Christ is coming back again. And remember I said to you, he's coming to give rewards. If your reward, if, if, if your works, it was good, then God will give you a good reward. If your life is outside of God and God's will, then the Bible lets us know that you will not see the kingdom of God. God bless you as you continue to hold on to him. Uh, God bless you as you continue to look to him. I encourage you to read the word for yourself. I shared with you 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Read the entire chapter. I shared with you uh, Psalm 90. I read the entire chapter. I shared with you Revelation, Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 5. Read it for yourself and see what the word of God says. The pastor is here. If you need more information, if you need a prayer, if you need some more support outside of what you are experiencing here, I'm here to give you that support and to pray with you and to help you as you continue to live your life, uh, a life that is pleasing to Jesus Christ. God bless you. At this time, I will now call on Colette Lawrence to do the prayer of comfort, I'm going to ask the immediate family to please remain seated and everyone else to please stand. Ah, Daddy. Father. We come to you today and we want to thank you, 
Lord, I want to thank you for the words that you have just sent through your manservant for the family, the friends, the well-wishers, for those, Lord God, who are outside of your, your kingdom, Lord God. I thank you for that word. It was life and it brings power, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up this family before you this evening, this afternoon. I give them to you, Lord Jesus. They are mourning, Lord God, the death of a loved one, Lord God. We can just imagine how difficult a moment that is. But I thank you that you are the peace giver. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the one, Lord Jesus, who can comfort us in our storms, in our difficult moments, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that when they reach out to you, Lord God, you will honor your word, Lord Jesus, that you will bring peace, Lord God, in the midst of the storms, Lord God. I declare upon them today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the heartache and the pain, the trials that they're going through as a family, Lord, that, Father, in the name of Jesus, your peace, your love, your grace will surround them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak into their spirit even now, Lord, and I cause your spirit to come alive and be active in in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your mother, your friend, your loved one has gone on to be with the Lord. She's left a legacy for you. She has lived a life for you. Your responsibility, if you want to see her again, is to give your heart and your life to the Almighty God. You have heard the word today. I declare upon you that your hearts, not only was it stirred, not only did you feel good in the moment, but when you go home you will look into that word you will take it you will take it to heart and it will be comfort to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth daddy we know that in every family Lord Jesus there is rivalry there is sibling rivalry there's disappointments there's disagreements there is anger there is everything Lord God that will separate and draw them away from each other but right now, God, I stand on the authority of your word. Lord God, I come against every plan of the enemy. Lord Jesus, to destroy this family in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I place the four daughters, the four women before you right now, God. In the name of Jesus, Daddy, anything that is happening in their hearts right now that will separate them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Mash it up, God, in the name of Jesus. I declare right now, Father, Lord Jesus, that a spirit of forgiveness will be upon them, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Their mother, the glue has gone, Father, in the name of Jesus. I declare it right now that each one of them will be the glue that will hold their family together. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that Father, as you comfort them, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that they will honor you, Lord God, that they will live in the light of your love, that, Lord Jesus, there'll be a difference in their family. Lord, there are three grandchildren that's present now. Daddy, if they don't make the difference, then there's going to be trouble for the grandchildren and the future grandchildren. So, Lord God, the prayer is a prayer of comfort. But I'm going to pray as you have led me to pray. I am covering this legacy, this generation under your blood. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that today, November 7th, 2022, will be a day of difference in the life of this family, God. In the name of Jesus, I heard correctly, there are three children who are living here and one who is overseas. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that a phone call will be made. Lord God, that there will be something that takes place. Daddy, we are asking you that you will envelop them in your arms. That you will love them in a way that none of us can love them, God, in the name of Jesus. 
We pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding. That it will guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. I declare in the love of God, we've just heard it. Father, in the name of Jesus, the love that sent you to the cross for us. We are declaring, oh God, that that love will be shed abroad in their hearts, Lord. That, Lord God, they will love on each other, Father, in the name of Jesus. That they will put the difficulties aside, God, in the name of Jesus. Anything that will seek to sever their relationship, Father, that they will put it aside, God, in the name of Jesus. Not just for today, God, but for the rest of their lives so that their children and their grandchildren will live in unity, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that he cover the friends, oh God, who are supporting them. Lord, I pray that they know how to speak a word in season to them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I declare upon them that your love will, Lord God, will carry them when they feel like they can't go on. I give you praise, I give you glory, and I give you honor in Jesus' name. I want to take this opportunity to say something to you that I've never done before. My father and I did not have a relationship. My father did not take care of me. And I had said to my relatives and anybody who would hear me that when my father died, I would not be going to his funeral. I made that declaration a long time. Four years ago, my aunt died. My aunt raised me and my aunt is my father's sister. When I went to her funeral and I was saying to my grandmother, I said, Grandma, because my intention when I went to that funeral was to go tell my father off. That was my intention. I said, Grandma, I, I'm going to this funeral, but I'm going to see my father. Can you imagine how disappointed I was when my father was in the hospital? And it seems I would not have gotten an opportunity to really tell him my mind because he didn't pay me any mind. But when I went to the hospital, when I tell you I was determined, I never met my siblings before. But they pointed them out to, at, to me at the funeral and I went to talk with them. And I know I, I'm kind of passionate. And when I saw them, and I said, listen, I'm going to the hospital. They were afraid, but I'm the, I'm the eldest of them all. Because in their minds, I'm going to kill their father off. It's my father. But can I tell you that when I went to that hospital and ready to tear him up, the Spirit of God says, let it go. And I tell you that though I am a Christian, my spirit, the, the, the part of me that wants to tell him how much he hurt me, but God says, let it go. I had to let it go. And for the first time in my almost 50 years, I was able to hug my dad. And he hugged me. It was like I never felt that there was any difficulty before, between us. And can I tell you, God did that because one year later, my father died. So I'm telling you siblings, I'm telling you family members, I don't know your story. I don't know none of you. I don't know any of you. But I, one thing I know in families that there is always tension. There is always turmoil. I'm telling you, put it to rest. None of you, the pastor told us, the word of God told us, none of you know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow is in, the, in God's hands. Our time is in his hands. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Amen. At this time, we'll call on the funeral director. Thank you to all who have participated. And thank you, Pastor, for your words of comfort. We're going to be moving to the cemetery for the comital, which will be Fairway Memorial Garden. The address is in the back of your folders. But we have the escort that is going to be guiding us Oakland Park Boulevard, east to I-95 North, to Sample Road, west to Military Trail, to the entrance of the cemetery. They have asked us to please turn our lights on and flashers so that they can identify us from the other vehicles. 
On behalf of our chapel manager, Mandisa Tomlinson, and our staff this morning, Corinne Calhoun, Casimir, Rene and myself, Jose Portela, we want to thank you very much for giving us the opportunity of serving you. And on part of that serving, we have a tradition of giving a Bible to every family that we serve. We can't give your loved one back, but we can give you the word of God and the everlasting comfort that it offers. And we present one Bible so that it will be shared among all of the family. We'll ask also at this time the poll bearers if you can come forward and we will give you instructions on moving. So Ramona, if you can please come forward to accept the Bible, we'll appreciate it. Thank you. Hi everyone, sorry, my name is Carrie and Rowe Nichols. Sorry I'm late, but there was an accident on the way when we were coming from Tampa, so that's why we're late. I'm just gonna play a song that I was gonna sing, but I'm just gonna play it from my phone. This is for the family. Cuz, all of you, listen to this very well.
Thank you. Thank you again. If the pallbearers can come forward, we'll appreciate. We'll do the processional, and then you all can get in your vehicle so that we can then move to the cemetery. Thank you again.
have a word of prayer first. Heavenly Father, once again, we ask for your presence to be here at this location, Lord, so we put Sister Lawrence to rest until you come. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to share with you uh, Revelation chapter 19, another scripture just to help you. Well, to be to help you to be comforted as you deal with the loss. Bible says here, family. Then I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, the one sitting on it, is called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like the flame of fire. On his head are many diadems. He has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the word of God. And the armies of heaven are arrayed in fine linen, white and pure. We're following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, which which is to strike down the nations, which he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This passage here is describing once again, the second and soon coming of Jesus Christ. And the reason why this is so significant, ladies and gentlemen, what you see here 
will not be when Jesus comes. <coughs> Those who die believing in Jesus Christ will receive uh, life eternal with him. As long as you believe in him. That's what the Bible says. So I encourage you once again, while you mourn, while you deal with the loss of a loved one, that you hold on to Jesus Christ and he will make all the difference in the world. You will cry, you will get sad, think about all the different times uh, we will have with loved ones, you as family have with mom, right? Pray that God will continue to keep you as you focus on him. Now, I tenderly commit the body of Sister Lawrence to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, leaving all the affairs of life in God's Invite the family members if you have some flowers, you can place them out in the casket. How can I say, representing those who could not come to hear careful with a step of giving come forward to the here and the casket and the cemetery to ask for move to the sidewalk so that they can move their things and proceed with the bedding if you're going to be present for the family again all of those who have participated thank you for being this afternoon very carefully with your flowers and then we need to just move over to the finds me and leads me on and never to escape a strength that shall remain it's never fading it's here to stay when my back's against the wall you rise above them all a hand to help me and ease the fall from beginning to the end and in the in-between, you're so consistent for me. Can't nothing be my mother's love. Can't nothing shake what she's made of. She's made like heavens up above. Can't nothing be my mother's love. I find it so amazing, didn't fully see it then. You've been a blessing without an end. Yeah, I'm forever learning from the lessons great and small. Yeah, you taught me and I'm holding on. And anytime I call before a single word, you know exactly what's on my heart from beginning to the end and in the in between you stay consistent for me can't nothing beat my mother's love can't nothing shape what she's made of she's made like heavens up above can't nothing be my mother's love Can't nothing beat my mother's love Oh no Can't nothing shake what she's made of Hey She's made like heavens from above Can't nothing beat my mother's love
nothing like a mother's love. Nothing like a mother's love. Nothing like a mother's love. Nothing like a mother's love.
someday. Meet me by the river. Someday. Meet me by the river. Not far away. Oh, when the Lord shall call me home, happy, happy, oh, beyond the sky. Meet me by the river. Someday it's soon be done. But all troubles and trials, when I get home on the other side, I'm gonna shake my hands with the elders. I'm gonna tell the people good morning. I'm gonna sit down inside my Jesus. I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. It's soon be done. On troubles and trials, when I get home, on the other side, I'm gonna shake my hands with the elders. I'm gonna tell all the people good morning. I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. I'm gonna sit down and rest in the world.
Sim. Sim.